Welcome back to NAS Compares and today I want to continue to show you just how easy it is to migrate and communicate and synchronize between your Synology NAS and a third party cloud provider such as Dropbox, Google Drive. It really is that straightforward and there are a whole host of advantages to you. So without further ado, let's get started. Here we are on the desktop platform here, the Synology DSM software, and synchronizing with a third party cloud is painfully straightforward. As soon as you've got the DSM installed in the very latest firmware, make sure of that, go into the package center there and look for, in the backup section, Cloud Sync. Nice and straightforward, and those that saw my QNAP video will probably have seen that the QNAP was a little bit more elaborate. If you don't believe me, we can look over here at the QNAP from my previous video just to show you how elaborate it was by comparison. Because there's so many different applications on the QNAP for doing a simple thing such as backing up to the cloud. So the Synology breaks it down into one or two apps, whereas the QNAP has several applications to do that, which can be rather cumbersome. Uh, cumbersome even, pronounce the words correctly, Andrews. So what we'll do is we'll make our way back to the Synology platform and continue the video. So. Once you've installed CloudSync, and again, you just click install when it's there. Once it's open, open the application here or at the top there. And the first thing it's gonna ask you is which cloud provider are you using? Now straight away, for those that watch the QNAP video, you can see that far more third-party cloud platforms are available off the bat on the Synology. We're gonna go with the Google Drive. Next, it will ask us to log in and we're gonna use the disposable NAS Compares account that's just set up for hackers out there. I wouldn't bother. And once that's synchronized, it's just gonna double check that you're okay to synchronize it and you agree. Next, once it's synchronized with that cloud, as you can see, we're gonna start setting up the folders in question. So first thing first, we want to sort out what is the localized folder that we're gonna deal with. Now, for those that watched my video um, earlier, I believe last week, regarding uh, video testing on the Synology, we're gonna use that folder there, and we're gonna synchronize it with the remote path here in, on that cloud. So for now, what we're going to be utilizing is, let's go for backup work stuff. After that, you can synchronize it to be both ways or one way, depending on how you want to do it. And then after that, you can encrypt the data transmissions as you see fit. Plus, of course, scheduling when you want it to happen. So you can enable scheduling how and when you want it. So disable that. And that's it. It really is that easy. And again, this is just another example of why the Synology NAS platform and the um, QNAP NAS platform are so, so different. Because if you'd watch my other video about synchronizing the cloud on a QNAP, you will instantly see that it takes several more layers to get everything done on the QNAP. But in between those layers, you have more options and areas of configuration. So do watch both those videos. Whether you own a Synology or a QNAP, I recommend that you watch both the videos with regards to third-party cloud backup because it is genuinely a straightforward process on both. It just happens to be that bit easier on the Synology. Even when you go into the operational platform, everything is incredibly straightforward. You can you can you know start the synchronization you ever want as quickly as you want, set up the schedule, and create images and time-based backups of those backups as you see fit. But this has been the video with regards to synchronizing your NAS with a third-party cloud and vice versa. If you're interested in buying your first NAS, do visit the guys at span.com, the NAS experts. If you want to learn more about network attached storage, do visit me at nascompares.com. And finally, if you've got a question, why not find me via Twitter and send me a message at Robbie on the Tube. Thanks for watching.